So my discipline, one of my disciplines is called what's, what's called behavioral threat assessment. I'm one of a small but growing group that try to assess the credibility and seriousness that somebody's going to do something. And we spend a lot of time trying to figure out what leads up to this. And, and what we've recognized is that there's a specific path of behavior that leads up to this. And they do certain things and they display really recognizable patterns of behavior that if we educate people on what to look for, that we could start to prevent some of these things from occurring. So say somebody sees another individual that is exhibiting that kind of behavior, whether it's cryptic messages they're posting on social yeah. media, anything, how do you, how should you assess that and you know, who should you tell? Yeah. So I think it's a baseline. This is overly simplistic, but we're all kind of weird. Like we're all peculiar in our own ways. And I think to what to watch for is when somebody gets what I call justice seeking behavior, they want to right a wrong. And then two, they start displaying an acceleration of inappropriate behavior. That's really, those two combinations are a perfect time to let somebody know, because you may not have the full picture. A supervisor, police department, a lot of police departments are really becoming in tune to these things that are just below a criminal violation, but concerning behavior, okay? And that's a great place to start. You know, I want to talk a little bit about what ended up happening um, in Gilroy. This was an individual, yeah. it was a well-secure place. Yeah. And this is an individual who apparently found a yeah. way to get in yeah. um, rifles into yeah. a very secure place. How do you think that happened? One, I'm, I'm not going to say that this is a game changer, but this is slightly different. We have seen in the past that people take advantage of very poor security. This venue had apparently security measures up front, and this guy cut through them by coming through a back gate. And that shows at least a level of pre-planning. I won't call it sophistication. Um, I also think that he was in or around that venue in the days leading up to it just is a theory. I have no, nothing to base it on, but scoping it out. I think for us, for people around, somebody who's planning an attack and collecting information is going to stand out and look different. And I kind of really expect that in the next few days, we're going to hear that, oh yeah, I saw a guy who was looking around or asking questions or getting maps, whatever it was. Um, it's our ability to pay attention to those weird behaviors and call them out. Is there any place that we are safe to go uh, these days? You know, it's a, that's a, such a tough question as I, I get ready to send my 17-year-old daughter off to college in another state. Um, it's sobering. Um, I don't think we can live in fear. I, I just, I don't think that's what we can do. And I don't think it's as easy enough to say we always have to be vigilant because we can't. You can't walk around worrying about every single person. My suggestion is to pay attention to changes in your environment. People who break that social contract and do something different, and when something different happens, then pay attention to it. But beyond that, man, we gotta live our lives. We gotta love on each other quite a bit more, talk quite a bit more, because there's a very soft approach to addressing this very hard problem. And it, as cheesy as it sounds, more love, more compassion, and more interacting with each other, that's how we're gonna fix this. So Hector, say it's a beautiful day like this. You're at an open space like a park. There's a music festival going on, and then immediately you hear gunshots. What is the first thing that you should do? The first thing you should do is trust your intuition. And if it sounds like gunfire, accept the fact that it is. Far too often I hear people talking about, I thought it was firecrackers. We thought it was something else. The quicker that you can accept that you're in a bad situation, the quicker you can help get yourself out of that bad situation. So once you realize you are in that bad situation and it is indeed gunfire that you've heard, okay. what is the next step that you should do from there to kind of uh, secure your safety? Okay. We gotta figure out where it's coming from. If we hear gunshots screaming and yelling coming from that direction over there, we wanna go the other way. But if you don't know where it's coming from, it's really hard just to go running because you may inadvertently run into the gunfire. You've gotta get your orientation, you gotta get your bearings down. So, you know, once you identify the yep. area that the gunfire is coming yep. from, say it's coming from over there. Over there. Yeah, okay. you know, okay. what should we do? Do we hide? Do we uh, look for cover? What okay. is the next uh, step? What I want to do is I want to get as much stuff, much time, distance, and material between me and the back, bad stuff. So if there's gunfire coming from that direction over there, one, I'm going to move this direction, and something as simple as a curb, 
okay, either either inside or outside this, I could get down behind this curb right here, okay, and watch how quickly I just disappear. And this is not my ideal, but this little 12 inches of cover is much better than being out in the open. And I keep trying to improve my situation. Now, my favorite place to be is where it's not happening. But I gotta get something between me and it before it gets, before it gets worse. So the interesting thing you said is finding cover. When you're in an open space like that, yeah. before you get to find yeah. cover, do you recommend that people just start running or should they just lay down where they're at right, right then and there? <laughs> this is a crappy answer, but it depends, okay? If it's not focused on anybody in, in particular, then maybe just running from here to there, wherever there is, makes more sense. But I've heard people describe this thing of zigzagging back and forth if you're being shot at. We don't zigzag back and forth like this. Get your butt from here to there, okay? As example from here, that tree right there would be a great place to hide, okay? Um, Some place out of this quad would be great, okay? But you've got to move. You've got to accept the fact this is happening and I got to move away from the violence. Is there anything that can be done to prevent these kind of yeah. Yeah. mass shootings yeah. from occurring? Yeah, that's a, it's a very tough question. Like I've dedicated my life to trying to understand this. You know, master's degree, studied thousands of cases, and I've come up with one final complicated answer. Got to trust your intuition. I guarantee this incident happened in Gilroy that day was not the first day, he, in my opinion, that he walked in that venue. He's going to behave differently. He's going to say something to somebody. He's going to post something online. When you see something that just doesn't feel right, it's probably not right. And take the action and trust your intuition and do something different. But if something like this does happen again, and there are people watching that can potentially be in a situation like that, what is the best bit of advice that you can give them? Yeah decide today that if that day ever comes, you're gonna make it home. Surviving these incidents start before they ever occur. And so if you could just accept the fact and come up with the strategy as a family, guys, if this happens, this is what we're gonna do. When I used to go out with my family, we'd always pick a spot that we'd meet up if something happened. Just that little bit of pre-planning makes a dramatic difference. I'm gonna make it back home to my family and I want everybody else to make it home back to their family.